So sometimes in graphing we need to rearrange uh, given the given equation, just depending on what we need to do with it. Um, often we're given things in the form of y equals mx plus c, and that is great because one, we can graph them really easy, just knowing what the intercept and the gradient are. And another important thing is that the functions in your fancy Casio calculators for year 11 and above um, have to actually have the get that equation as a y equals mx plus c. So if you're given an equation that's not in the form of y equals mx plus c, you can't use your calculator um, graph or table function. So a couple of ways that we can go about um, processing this information, and the first one, which is probably the most universal, is just rearranging the equation. So that's what we're going to look at here, and it does take a little bit of algebra. Um, so again, our aim is to get something in the form of y equals uh, something x plus something else. You know, it could be negatives as well, like y equals negative 7x minus 3. But there we've got a y equals everything else all by itself. But I can give you the form in a, of an equation such as this first example that says 2x plus y equals 7. So that will be a linear equation. Um, but it's in a format right now that um, is hard for us to plot unless you know some tricks. And it is uh, also not going to help out your calculator skills at all. So what we need to do is rearrange it so that it just says y equals a bunch of stuff. Um, so think about what you want to do in terms of algebra. You would want to get y all by itself. So I can see that I've got my y term here. And it is, um, the only other thing on that side of the equation is the 2x. And it, if I notice, is a positive 2x. So to get rid of the 2x on this side and effectively move it to the other side, I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides of the equation. And that means the positive 2x and the negative 2x will cancel. And I'm left with y is equal to 7 minus 2x. And if you are going to be, um, you know, wanting it in exactly the y equals mx plus c form, you can rearrange this so that you get your x term written down first. So as your next step, we could write y is equal to negative 2x plus 7. Now that can be tricky sometimes. You've got to make sure that you're well aware of the fact that that negative sign always goes with the term that it is in front of. So it goes with the term to its right. So that negative there, that subtraction there, needs to move with the 2x. So it needs to be with the 2x still. See how the 2x is still negative the next part of how I've written it? And you'll notice there's no sign in front of the 7, so I can assume it's positive. So if I need to put a plus or minus there, I'll put a positive, a plus 7, when I move it. So that's the aim here. We're just going to rearrange things so that they're in y equals form. And now that you've got it written like this, you can pop it straight into your calculator and use any of those functions that you need. And you could also graph that knowing that your y-intercept is 7 and that your gradient would be negative 2 over 1. So looking at another example, and I'll show you how to plot these two with a little bit of a trick. So here's an example, negative 6x plus 2y is equal to negative 8. Again, it's not in the form of y equals 2mx plus c. So I'm going to rearrange this to get y by itself. So first thing I notice is that um, there is the minus 6x term here. So to get rid of that, oops, I guess I should change my notes, change the equation. That is a minus 6x, so we are going to plus 6x to both sides. Plus 6x and plus 6x. And again, my reason for that is because negative 6x and positive 6x will cancel. I will be left with 2y is equal to negative 8 plus 6x. My next step would be to divide both sides by 2. Because 2y equal negative 8 plus 6x is not enough, I need to get it by y by itself. And right now there's a 2 with that y, so that's 2 times y. The opposite of times in would be to divide it. So I'm going to divide everything by 2. Again, if you wanted to be writing that as divide by 2, that's totally fine as well. I just use fractions instead. Because 2 divided by 2 becomes 1, those cancel, I'm left with y. And negative 8 divided by 2 is negative 4. And 6x divided by 2 will be positive 3x. And then again, if you wanted to rearrange that, you could write it as y is equal to, the plus goes with the 3x, so I'll just write 3x, and that minus 4 or negative 4, negative stays with the 4. Um, so another trick for us for plotting these, I'll just kind of 
go over this um, strategy for us, um, is that we can do what we call the cover-up method. So with the cover-up method, what we do is we rely on the fact that we can find the intercept for x and y axes if we substitute in a zero for an x or a y. So what we can do is, in a sense, cover up a term with one finger. And when we use y is equal to zero, it will get us the x-intercept. And the reason that happens is because on the x-axis, y has a value of zero. So it will tell us where our line is when y is equal to zero, which puts us on the x-axis. And likewise, if I do x equals zero, that will put me on the y-axis, um, and I will get the y-intercept. So if I take that equation that we just did, I'll rewrite it down here, minus 6x plus 2y is equal to negative 8. What I'm proposing we do is we think about, okay, if, I'll do it here, minus 6x plus 2y is equal to negative 8. If um, y is equal to 0, that means I can put in a 0 here, so 2 times 0 becomes 0. So minus 6x plus 2 times 0 is equal to negative 8, which basically means I can cover that up. So if you want to, you can think about cover up the y, and what do you get for x? So um, I would solve for this, and I would say x is equal to negative 8 divided by negative 6, or 4 over 3. So 1 and 1 third. So my first point would be at um, on the x-axis, would be at 1 and 1 third, so sort of right in there. And then the next step, if x is equal to 0, essentially we can cross out the first term, so we cover up the, where the x is, we would cross this part out here, because when I put in a 0, that goes away. So I'm left with 2y is equal to negative 8. Solve for y there, you get y is equal to negative 4. So at negative 4, is my y-intercept, and you can see I've got my two points there, so you can go ahead and connect the dots if you want. And similarly, you could have used your y equals mx plus c method with the first, or with that equation that we'd rearranged for. Starting at negative 4, my gradient is 3 over 1, so I'd go up 3, 1, 2, 3, over 1, and you can see that I can't draw a very straight line, but if I could, oops, damn it. it would have gone through that point there. But that's what you get for watching me draw on a tablet instead of a piece of paper with a ruler. Okay, so that is the cover-up method. Um, we'll look at one more example. Uh, first, just to rearrange this problem, I will rearrange it. Um, so my first step here is that I need to get uh, y by itself. So I'm going to think about getting rid of that 4x. It's a positive 4x, so I'll do the opposite, minus 4x, minus 4x to both sides. So I'm left with minus 3y is equal to 9 minus 4x. That is minus 3y, t minus 3 times y, so the opposite of timesing by minus 3 is going to be dividing by minus 3. So I'm going to divide each of those terms by negative 3. That'll leave me with y is equal to 9 divided by negative 3 will give me negative 3. Positive divided by negative will give you a negative. And 4, negative 4 divided by negative 3 will get me a positive 4 over 3 x. And again, if you wanted to rewrite this, y is equal to 4 over 3x minus 3. And we could plot that using the y-intercept method, so I could start at negative 3, and then I could go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, over 3, 1, 2, 3, and plot in those lines. Or, I could use the cover-up method, so again, 4x minus 3y is equal to 9. If I cover up the y, meaning when y is equal to 0, I'll get my x-intercept. That would mean that x is equal to 9 over 4. So on my x-intercept, 9 over 4, well that's basically 2.25. So you can see here, that's pretty close. That would be the point that I'd put down to get my x-intercept. And using the cover-up method to find the y-intercept, 4x minus 3y is equal to 9. When I plug in x equals to 0, that term basically gets covered up. Solve for this. 
y is equal to negative 3. Again, that's just dividing both sides by negative 3. And that is my y-intercept, which we had from the other equation as well. So two things that are important out of this, I guess, is knowing, one, you have to rearrange your equation if you're going to use your calculator. So if you want to put it into graph or table function, you need to get it into y equals mx plus c. Plus, you can always plot from that. But um, the cover-up method can be a trick for you to plot it if you don't feel like rearranging the equation.